Hey guys, welcome back to the Tiny Lab. We are in Phoenix, Arizona, and we're quite a ways through our tour. Uh, and because of the way that we do business with the Tiny Lab, always pulling in and having it on different grades and re-leveling it and positioning it in different ways, our equipment, just like the rest of the house, gets abused in special ways that a normal house wouldn't. So anyone who has an air conditioner, that means you, should be maintaining your equipment because it doesn't necessarily work the way that you think it will unless you maintain it. And so we've got our maintaining experts here. Uh, first of all, this is Jim Clark, and he is with Mitsubishi Electric Heating and Cooling, uh, who makes this fine piece of equipment. Jim, what are we doing today? Well, today, obviously, because you do use this in a lot of different areas and without leveling and so forth, you can get mildew built up on your fan coil. So I have Garrett with Lincoln Air who's one of our elite diamond contractors. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna go ahead and take the Mitsubishi FH series air handler apart. I'm gonna take the blower wheel out and I'm also gonna show you all the proper ways of dismantling and putting it back together again so you can properly clean and service the unit. Great, and this is especially important for the tiny housers because this is the piece of equipment that I think every tiny house should be heated and cooled with and you're gonna need to do this probably more often. So if you can't find a diamond contractor because you're pulling through town and you don't know where you are, uh, then feel free to follow these instructions and really make sure that you're constantly cleaning this thing um, as it needs to be, and you will know when it needs to be cleaned by, based on the smell. So let's go ahead and get started. These are the filters um, for the air handler themselves. They are washable filters. Um, you need to make sure that you're constantly washing these things. Um, you might actually have to wash them more often than you would change a traditional HVAC um, air filter. Um, cool thing is, is that since they are washable, you just go in the sink, wash them off, make sure they're 100% dry, and then put them back into the unit. Take these blades off. We have these uh, little side guys right here. You just slide them off right there. Flathead screwdriver, and then they slide right out. There's little clips on the actual air handler, and it's all plastic. So a lot of times you're going to feel like you're breaking something, but you're actually not. Um, they're just little clips and it's just the noises that they make. You can see that this part is loose right now. Now just keep in mind a lot of these things, they don't have anywhere else to go but dangle. Um, and that's unfortunately Could the way. Water. And the drain pan, yeah. So this is the drain pan right here. Uh -huh. So you have to make sure and look to see that it's completely dry gotcha. before. And we're in Phoenix. Is it completely dry? It is not. There's a little bit of moisture in there. And we are gonna go ahead and actually um, disinfect the drain pan too once we get to that point because we do have a little bit of mildew on the back side here that we're gonna take care of as well. We have the indoor coil right here. And what happens is, is when this is actually sweating um, from the condensation, it all comes down into this drain pan right here. Um, what can happen is when it's not completely level, it can build up and let water sit. So in a normal house, would that be an indication of the fact that you have mildew there? Would that mean that the unit is not level? Would that be a good diagnosis? It could be that it's not 100% level, yes. And I do see it all the time where units are not installed level. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to get it a little bit off level and all it takes is a little bit because water always goes the path of least resistance. So if it's sitting off level and it doesn't have the drain line which is right here to go through, it's just going to sit in this drain pan until it literally fills up to the point where it actually can go out. So I see it all the time where drain pans are actually full of water. So we're going to go ahead and clean that up right now. And this is just a uh, industrial um, orange wipe. They sell them everywhere, actually. Okay, 
So now that we've got the uh, drain pan all nice and clean, we're gonna go ahead and clean behind it, inside of here in the air handler just real quick. We are gonna make a mess when we pull out the blower wheel. We just wanna get some of those specs out. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get the set screw off the actual blower wheel on the uh, motor itself. So I don't know if you can see that or not. Great, so there's a little space. Yeah, there's a little extra space in the slot. So you will need a longer Phillips screwdriver to get in there and loosen up that set screw. Now do not take the set screw all the way out or you're gonna have big problems down the road. So we're just loosening this up so we can get the blower wheel off the actual blower motor itself. The blower motor is actually right here so you can see where the blower wheel sits on it. 86% of the fan coil and the condensed unit are made out of recycled material. And also, Mitsubishi makes every single part in the Mitsubishi factory right down to the screws. Whoa, that's surprising. Most companies do not do that. It's, it's a way of keeping the quality control. So we gotta take these screws out, so we need to make sure that we're not taking out any screws that you don't need to. There's this th two right here on the coil. There's one right here on the top left that we're going to take out, and there's another one on the top right that we're going to take out. You don't need to take out any other screws other than these ones to get the coil propped open so we can get to the blower wheel. And they do need to be actually very careful with this. This is the coil, so if you start yanking on this, you could actually rupture the uh, seal inside the unit here. So you just have to be kind of gentle in this section. And also do not touch or put your hands on any of this coil yeah. section right here, because obviously you can bend it over very easily and it defeats the purpose of the coil. So the blower wheel just kind of pops out like that. We're gonna take this off. The blower wheel comes right out, and as you can see, it's definitely about due to get cleaned out. So all we're gonna do here, since it's all plastic, is we're actually just gonna wash it out and get it nice and clean. So we're gonna get behind the coil. You're gonna have to kind of reach in there, and you can actually see that there is a few specks of mildew inside there, so we're gonna get all that kind of cleaned up right now. And again, be careful with the coil, it is right here. So the next part that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and clean the coil here. Um, this is an industrial grade coil cleaner. Um, it is a no rinse solution. It is not typically um, attainable by the general public. You can look on Amazon to see if you can find something like this, um, but you can't just go to Home Depot and buy something like this. And you don't have to get every single spot on the coil with this because what it does the way this works um, is once the foam actually gets into the coil the next time the unit condensates the water running down the coil itself will actually wash all the chemical off and it gets all the debris out what this foam does is it actually just loosens up any debris that it's in the coil so that way it can go down into the drain pan and then out through the condensation line cool does it kill mildew it does Kills mildew, kills germs, um, pretty much kills everything. So now that we've got everything nice and cleaned up, what we're gonna go ahead and do is put everything back together again, because obviously it's easy to take something apart, a little bit harder to put it all back together again, especially when you have a lot of screws, and you're like, where did these go? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, first thing that we need to do is we need to get this blow reel back into place. Um, it does take a little bit of finagling. So, and you have, again, have to be careful with the coil. Now there is a shaft on this blower motor. I don't know if you can get in there and see it. See the shaft? Yes. So that shaft is gonna go back into this blower wheel. So make sure that you have the side with the hole on the right hand side so it can slide back into it. And that's what we're gonna get that set screw back onto is that shaft. And that screw is just snug tight. It doesn't need to fit into a certain hole inside of the shaft. Yeah, it just it's a snug fit. Two 
So we have to make sure that it spins freely, no obstructions, and you can adjust it to the left and to the right a little bit once it's in there. But once we know it's spinning nice and freely, we can go ahead and start putting everything else back together again. Uh, make sure that we put this piece back on first because this right hand piece will not go on unless you have this piece on first. So it doesn't matter what position that you put these veins in, um, when you're putting this back together again, when you turn the unit back on, it will actually reposition the veins. You'll see the veins move up and down a bunch of times until it reconfigures itself. Now putting these veins back on, the little white guys that we popped out earlier, you can just actually push them in with your fingers, and they're in there nice and safe. So there you have it, cleaning the FH series from Mitsubishi Electric. Uh, it's awesome piece of equipment. I highly recommend it for any size house, obviously in a tiny house, very, very important, but any size house that can work. Thank you very much to Garrett Benneker and Lincoln Air. Thank you for, for expertise. That's what an elite diamond contractor does, by the way, is really know their stuff. Thank you very much for helping me. Get You're very fixed, welcome. Jim. Awesome. You guys, tune in next time.